بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم we will start our lecture on the vasculitis vasculitis defined as inflammation of blood vessels of any size affecting one or few vessels in a limited area or could be systemic affecting multiple organ systems that to say affect the vessels in the multiple organ that may associated or result in the angitis arteriolitis, venulitis, capillaritis, and aortitis. That to say, the inflammation may involve the small, medium size, or even the large vessels like the aorta. Vasculitis occur in the diverse clinical setting. That to say, can be seen in the various type of the disorder, as we will see later on. Depending on the vascular bed affected, whether it's central nervous system, heart, small bowel, the manifestation can be protein. That to say, there is various manifestation for the vasculitis because there is various site of the vessels that are involved by the inflammation. The main uh, shared symptoms are constitutional symptoms and sign, such as uh, fever, myalgia, arthralgia, and malaise. This is the main symptom that can be seen in the vasculitis. Localized vasculitis is a secondary to the inflammatory process in the area. That to say, localized area can be affected by the inflammatory process involving the vessels, whether uh, solitary vessels or multiple vessels that can be localized. Start with the systemic vasculitis. Regarding the pathogenesis of systemic vasculitis, the uh, two main immune uh, uh, mediator can be affected by either immune complex, that to say antigen antibody deposition, or uh, the vasculitis can be mediated by the immune uh, cells. Immune complex uh, vascular lesions resemble those found in the experimental immune complex mediated condition. That to say, uh, there is uh, uh, evidence of the inflammatory process can be seen in the uh, experimental animals or experimental deposition of the immune complex. When we talk about immune complex, we mean there's antigen and antibody that forming a complex can be mediated inflammatory process in a certain area. This can be uh, detected or uh, demonstrated by the DNA and anti-DNA complex and complement in the vascular lesion of the systemic lobus traumatosis can be seen. That to say there's deposition, deposition of the DNA, anti-DNA in the uh, person with the systemic lobus uh, traumatosis that indicate presence of the immune complex role in the mediation of the vasculitis in this uh, syndrome. Virus and other antigen have been localized in the lesions plus the presence of the same antigen with anti uh, with aminoglobulin antibodies and complement in the circulation. That to say the deposition of the same immune complex in the circulation and in the site of the inflammatory process can be seen. Cell mediated immunity demonstrate the presence of the uh, granulomatous inflammation in the affected vessels by the definition of the rule of the cell mediated immunity in the mediation of the systemic vasculitis. Vasculitis can be classified according uh, various uh, uh, parameters into the polyarthritis nodosa, Wigner's granulomatosis, microscopical polyarthritis, temporal giant cell or cranial arthritis. This uh, various classification depending mainly on the size of the vessels that are involved. Polyarthritis nodosa mainly affect the medium size and small arteries. Wigner's granulomatosis affect the arterioles, venules, capillaries, and small blood vessels. Microscopical polyarthritis, or named as hypersensitivity vasculitis, mainly affect venules, capillaries, and arterioles. That, that to say, affect the small blood vessels. Temporal giant cell arthritis mainly affect the large blood vessels can be seen. Start with the polyarthritis nodosa. From its name, it's poly arthritis nodosa. Poly, there's multiple arthritis arteries and nodosa formation of the node on the surface of blood vessels. So, polyarthritis nodosa is a systemic disease that to say affect many organs in the body, characterized by necrotizing inflammation of small to the medium sized arteries throughout the body that to say systemic throughout the body means the the process is systemic sparing only the pulmonary circulation only the pulmonary circulation are not affected sparing the pulmonary circulation mean only the 
pulmonary circulation are not affected by this inflammatory process. The involvement of the vessels is focal, random, and episodic. Mean there is fo focal localized involvement of the vessels, and the uh, involvement are random, not systemic, affect uh, both sides or, or so on, right and left, and episodic. Episodic attacks. That to say there is an uh, uh, periods of the attack and later on rest of the uh, other time. Bolly attracts to those uh, is it is often produced irregular aneurysmal dilatation that appear on the surface as nodularity. That to say there is irregular aneurysmal dilatation of the visual wall that appear as nodularity. So that named as nodose and vascular obstruction leading to the infarction of the certain areas that are uh, circulated or uh, perfumed by this perfusion by this uh, 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 vessels that are affected. The inflammatory process weakens the arterial wall as we talk in the uh, atheromatous plague. When there's an inflammatory process in the certain area will result in the weakening the arterial wall and this weakness can lead to the aneurysm and forming nodularity and even rupture of the blood vessels can be occurred. Bolly arteritis nodosa characterized by the acute lesion and healed lesion. Acute lesion show transmural inflammation. That to say, the entire wall thickness of the blood vessels are inflamed. Intima, media, and adventitia. Associated with the fibrinoid necrosis. As we talked previously, when there is necrosis with the fibrinous material in the area. With round cell infiltrate extending around the blood vessels. That to say, infiltration extend around the blood vessels. This is the acute lesion when there is a transmural inflammation, fibrinoid necrosis, and inflammatory cell infiltration around the blood vessels. The second phase or the lesion of the bolia atrasis nodos are healed lesion that show marked fibro fibrotic thickening of the arterial wall associated elastic lamina fragmentation. The, so there is an acute lesion characterized by inflammation, fibrinoid necrosis, and heat lesion that characterized by the fibrous thickening and fragmentation of the uh, elastic lamina of the wall. The main characteristic feature of bolia arthritis nodosa are that all stage of activity, including the acute and heat lesion, may coexist in the different vessels or sometimes even in the same vessel that are involved by the inflammation. That to say, suggesting this process of the acute and healed lesion that are present in the same vessels or in the same person, patient with the various uh, different vessels, suggesting there is an ongoing uh, uh, pathogenesis, pathogenesis and recurrent pathogenic insult. That to say, the process is continuous. There is ongoing, ongoing and recurrent pathogenic insult damaging the blood vessels that result in the formation of the acute and heal lesion in the same vessels and sometime even in the same patient in the different vessels. The clinical features of polyarthritis nodosa occurs in the young adult, more in the male, with the bizarre sign and symptom. This bizarre sign and symptom because the vascular involvement is widely scattered. That to say, some patient presented with the eye uh, uh, complaint, some with the skin, some with the renal, other with the GIT, and so that there is a bizarre sign and symptom that can be seen in the, uh, uh, in the patient. Regarding the diagnosis of bolia tractor nodosa, mainly depending on the biopsy, isn't the necessary. So, biopsy is often necessary to confirm the diagnosis. After suspicious of the condition clinically, we need biopsy to confirm the diagnosis. Regarding the pathogenesis of bolia arthritis nodosa, 30% of patients with, with bolia arthritis nodosa have hepatitis B antigenemia and hepatitis B surface antigen and antibody immune complex can be demonstrated in their lesion. That to say about 30% are related to the presence of the immune complex related to the hepatitis. This is a microscopical picture for the bolia arthritis nodosa that characterized by the narrowing of the lumen of the vessels, fragmentation of the uh, 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 elastic lamina in addition to the inflammatory cell infiltration and the fibrinoid necrosis sometimes be seen in the wall of blood vessels. Mixture of the acute and healed phase can be seen in this uh, uh, picture. So the characteristic features of uh, mixture of the acute and uh, 
a healed face can be seen with the, in the same vessels, including the uh, fibrosis, fragmentation of elastic lamina, in addition to the inflammatory cell infiltration, narrowing of the lumen that may result in the ischemia and even infarction. The second topic of the vasculitis, what we named Wigner's granulomatosis. Wigner's granulomatosis is characterized by the classical, uh, classical trait. Trait means three, but, uh, three uh, uh, pathognomonic features of this condition. The first are focal necrotizing vasculitis of the lung and the upper respiratory tract. The second, necrotizing granuloma of the upper and lower respiratory tract. The third are renal involvement. So this is the main trait of the Wigner's. Trait means there is three main pathognomonic features that are essential for the diagnosis of Wigner's. When the absence of one of these uh, three traits cannot diagnose the condition as the Wigner's granulomatosis, and uh, renal involvement including focal necrotizing glomerulonephritis, and the second is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So the renal involvement can be either focal necrotizing or rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis can be seen. Regarding the clinical picture of the Wigner's granulomatosis can be overlapped with polyarthritis nodosa. Why? Because the polyarthritis nodosa are uh, characterized by the protein manifestation because every site of the body can be involved, excluding the pulmonary circulation. Only the pulmonary circulation are not uh, involved. More in the male, peak in the fifth decade, diagnosis by the lung biopsy is essential because the lung is the major uh, part of the uh, three trade uh, component of the uh, Wigner's in addition to the focal necrotizing vasculitis, there is necrotizing granuloma of the uh, respiratory tract, so that the lung biopsy is essential. Regarding the prognosis of the Wigner's granulomatosis, 80% die within a year, 10% respond to the treatment, and the pathogenesis may relate to the cell mediated and uh, can be documented by the presence of the anti-nuclear antibody uh, uh, R positive. The third topic of vasculitis, what we named microscopical poly angitis or microscopical body arthritis. This is a necrotizing vasculitis that generally affect capillaries. So as microscopical body angitis affect mainly capillaries as well as arterioles and venules. That to say involvement of the small vessels, small vessels, venules, arterioles and capillaries of the size smaller than those involved by body arthritis nodosa, rarely larger arteries can be involved. Neither did then rarely to be involved the larger vessels by the vis this type of the uh, uh, vasculitis. Microscopical body angitis characterized all by this, by that, all synchronized the same stage. In contrast to the body attractive nodosa, the can feel acute and healed stage can be seen uh, in the different vessels. That to say, all the stage can be uh, seen in the same stage same stage, either there is an acute phase or acute lesion characterized by necrotic inflammation or by the healed phase that characterized by the fibrosis. While in contrast to the polyarthritis nodosa that characterized by the old stage can be seen uh, 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 in the vessels or in the patient. This type of the vasculitis affecting the skin, mucous membrane, lung, brain, heart, GI, kidney, and the muscle. Regarding the pathogenesis, this type of the vasculitis named hypersensitivity vasculitis. In many cases, it represents a reaction to an antigen, such as drug, microorganism, and a previously sensitized patient. That to say, patient with the previous sensitization to the drug or microorganism later on develop the vasculitis in, in response to the, uh, uh, this type of the uh, reaction, hypersensitivity vasculitis. It could be limited to the skin, leading to the bulbable, uh, bulbable barbara or systemic uh, condition leading to the variable sign and symptom. That to say, similar to that of polyarthritis nodosa, but can't be demonstrated or differentiated by the presence of the lesion in the same stage. So, polyarthritis, uh, microscopic polyangitis characterized by the segmental fibrinoid necrosis of the media with focal transmural necrotizing lesion. Focal transmural necrotizing lesion and fibrinoid necrosis and that can be seen in the media. Only infiltrating and fragmented neutrophil are seen. That to say, 
the main characteristic features of microscopic Ebola angiitis is, is, is the presence of the fragmented neutrophil that give rise to the term leukocytoclastic uh, vasculitis so that this type of vasculitis uh, named also as leukocytoclastic leuco mean white pc neutrophil clastic destructed type of vasculitis granulomatous inflammation is absent in contrast or in compared to the wigner's with the exception of those with the brain or renal involvement, most patients respond to the removal of the offend, of, offending antigen. As we discussed, that the, uh, the antigen can be in form of a drug of, or microorganism that induce hypersensitivity reaction resulting in the vasculitis. So that with the absence of this antigen can be resolved the condition completely, except that condition uh, involvement of the brain or renal vasculature. Specific syndrome can be associated with this type of microscopic albola angitis. That is to say, this is type of the inflammation at the level of the small capillaries, venules, and arterioles. Can be manifested in form of Hinoch Schoenle and Berbera, essential mixed cryoglobulinemia, and vasculitis associated with malignancy. All this type of the inflammation of the capillaries, arterioles, venules can be demonstrated with the presence of the uh, uh, clinical presentation in form of the uh, uh, microscopic albola angitis histologically. So, another type of vasculitis that seen in the uh, larger blood vessels named as tumbral, related to the tumbral area of the uh, skull, and giant cell characteristic feature or cranial arthritis. This is the name of this type of vasculitis. Is the most common type of vasculitis that's seen in the larger arteries of the head, particularly branch of the carotid artery, mainly temporal branch and terminal branch of ophthalmic arteries, aorta, brain, breast. All this there can be affected by this type of the vasculitis, mainly in the temporal branch, and so that the name as temporal arthritis, and characterized by the presence of the giant cell, also named as giant cell arthritis can be seen in mainly in the cranium and no, uh, known as the cranial arthritis. Almost never involve the heart or the lung. Regarding the histology characterized by the presence of granulomatous inflammation with the giant cell, as we say, take its name from the presence of the giant cell, granulomatous inflammation with a chronic non-specific uh, bone arthritis and the fragmentation of internal elastic lamina. Fragmentation of the internal elastic lamina is another feature of the giant cell arthritis. Regarding the pathogenesis, T cell mediated immunity and uh, uh, can uh, refer or uh, T cell mediated immunity is the major uh, underlying cause for this type of vasculitis. This can be demonstrated by the presence of the histology with the presence of the granulomatous inflammation and presence of the giant cell. And therapeutic response to the steroid is, is another indicator that the underlying causes T cell mediated immunity. Regarding the clinical features, this type of the vasculitis is more common in the female and more after, uh, especially after the 50 years old. Characterized by the non specific constitutional symptom, so that the co constitutional symptom is the major presentation of the uh, uh, vasculitis in general and in addition to the local facial pain and tenderness in the area, ocular symptom, including the possibility of blindness can be uh, seen in the patient with the temporal giant cell arthritis. The diagnosis depending on the biopsy, but could be negative. That to say, the lesion is intermittent. Some area can be involved by the lesion and another area can be saved from the lesion and so that the lesion can be negative and uh, constitutional uh, and uh, uh, biopsy is not, uh, uh, that to say, negative biopsy is not to exclude the diagnosis of temporal giant cell arthritis. Thera therapy is including the response to the corticosteroid. This is the picture for the uh, temporal giant cell arthritis characterized by the diffuse granulomatous inflammation of the wall of the blood vessels in, in addition to the presence of the giant cell and the fragmentation of the, uh, uh, of the smooth muscle of the uh, media and uh, presence uh, scattered giant cell fibrosis and uh, this is the picture of the granulomatous uh, uh, or uh, temporal giant cell arthritis in addition to the narrowing of the lumen. That to say, granulomatous inflammation of the wall while there is narrowing of the lumen 
that result in the ischemia of the area that are uh, uh, perfused by this uh, vessels. Another type of vasculitis, what we name pulseless disease, Takayazi arthritis, pulseless disease, that is without pulse. Pulseless without, mean without pulse. Vasculitis of the large arteries, mainly the arch of aorta, characterized by the fibrous thickening of the wall and obliteration of the mouth of the great vessels. This obliteration of the mouth of the great vessels of the uh, uh, of the aorta that result in the pulseless disease because there is narrowing of the lumen of the main supplement of the upper limb blood vessels that result in the lack of the pulsation when we examine the patient for the presence of the pulse so that there is obliteration of the mouth of great vessels of the uh, aorta and markedly narrowing or even obliterated uh, lumen. So, it's named as pulseless disease because the inflammation and the fibrous in the wall that result in the obliteration of the lumen of the branch of the aorta. Regarding the histology, the change range from the adventitial medial intense mononuclear inflammation in the media to the granulomatous inflammation with replete with the giant cell. That to say, there is no evidence of the giant cell in the area and bachy medial necrosis, fibrosis in the wall, narrowing of the lumen and weakening pulse. So that pulseless disease related to the chronic inflammation, fibrosis, necrosis, fibrosis, and even weakness in the pulse. Regarding the clinical presentation of this Takayazi characterized, these include reduced in the blood pressure and weaker pulse in the upper extremities relative to the lower extremity, and this is weaker pulse related to the obliteration in the lumen of the major branch of the arch of aorta that result in the lack of the pulsation in the upper extremity blood vessels with the coldness or numbness of the fingers. Ocular disturbance, including the visual defect. The course of disease variable may enter in the quiescent stage. I have to say some area may be quiescent for some time and later on reactivation can be seen. Another topic what we named Kawasaki disease. Kawasaki disease, characteristic, characteristic features of this disease are the, uh, also named as the mucocutaneous Mucocutaneous involvement of the mucous membrane, involvement of the skin, and lymph node. Mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome. Kawasaki disease is acute, self-limited, febrile illness of the infant and children, characterized by the involvement of the infant and children, associated with arthritis, affecting the large to the medium size and even the small blood vessels. This disease, it uh, it is a leading cause of the acquired heart disease in the children. This is the disease of the infant and result involvement of the heart, result in the uh, acquired heart disease in the children. Most of the disease in the children are congenital, but can be acquired, yes, can be acquired uh, as this disease, what named as the Kawasaki disease, vasculitis. Characterized by the fever, lymphadenopathy, skin rash, oral conjunctival erythema, and 20% have a coronary vasculitis, often with with a neurism. Regarding the histology is similar to the to the polyarthritis nodosa features from the histological background, but there is difference in the clinical manifestation and the clinical including the age of the patient, infant and children. This disease is the disease of the infant and children. Etiology is unknown. It's a self-limited disease. Really uh, can be fatal in one person due to the complication of the coronary involvement that results in the heart disease. Another disorder that are what we named thromboangitis obliterans. Obliterans are named as the Berger disease, another type of vasculitis that can involve this disease of intermediate and small artery and vein, artery and vein in the limbs with extension to the accompanying the nerve. The first time we see a vasculitis that extends the nerve. All the previous type, كل الأنواع السابقة ما كان فيها involvement of the nerve. The only disease that involves the nerve is the Berger disease or thromboangitis obliterans. From its name, is thrombo means thrombus. Angitis, there is inflammation of the blood vessels. Obliterans, there is obliteration of the lumen. So that this disease characterized by the thrombosis, inflammation, and obliteration of the lumen. Microscopically, there is an acute and chronic inflammation accompanied by the luminal thrombosis, as we said. Typically, the thrombus contains small microabscess, microabscess, composed of the neutrophil surrounded by granulomatous inflammation 
and the thrombus may eventually organize and recanalize recanalization of the thrombus and finally we end with the obliteration of the lumen thrombus that are found in the lumen finally can be organized that is in the obliteration of the lumen so that there's a thromboangitis obliterans characteristic feature of this uh, disease the inflammatory process extends to the contiguous vein and nerve rare with other form of vasculitis as we talk من النادر انه في كل انواع السابقه من الفاسكولايتس ما شفنا انه النير كان بينفور and in the time all the three structure become encased in the fibrous tissue three structure نقصد فيها الارتري والفين والنير can be encased in the fibrous tissue when there is a chronic inflammatory process can be involved typically seen in the heavy smoker male before the age of 35 often lead to the vascular insufficiency That to say there is because of obliteration, obliterance, so that the vascular insufficiency can be seen leading to the intermittent claudication of the lower limb, followed by the pain at the wrist and uh, might end uh, in the gangrene. Regarding the etiology is the endothelial injury by the toxin in the tobacco. Another phenomena can be related to the vasculitis, what we named rhinoid disease. is an idiopathic condition affecting young women it's not a vasculitis it's an idiopathic condition reflected as exaggeration of central and local vasomotor response to the cold or emotion characterized by the paroxysmal pillar or cyanosis of the acral part due to the spasm of the local arteries and arterioles caused by exaggeration of the normal central and local response to the cold and emotional stimuli so that This stimuli, whether emotional and uh, or uh, cold, may result in the vasospasm that results in the Baylor cyanosis, Baylor cyanosis, and the, the associated with the structural change in the arterial wall are absent, except in the late in the course of the disease when the intimal thickening can be appear that will lead to the trophic change. Trophic change means there's ischemic change in the area in the adjacent uh, area that are uh, supplied by this type of vessels. The course is usually benign, but long-standing chronic cases can result in the atrophy of the skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscle. Ulceration and ischemic gangrene are rare. Rhinoid phenomena in comparison result from exaggeration vasoconstriction of the digital arteries and arterioles. This vascular change induce paroxysmal pillar or cyanosis of the digit. of the hand or feet infrequently the nose ear lobes or lips can also involve characteristically the involved digit show red white and blue color blue uh, color uh, change from the most proximal to the most distal correlating with the bar, uh, proximal vasodilatation central vasoconstriction and more distal cyanosis so that the phenomenon of the vasospasm cyanosis pillar can be uh, paroxysmal attacks Rhinoid phenomena may be primary disease entity or secondary to the variety of the condition. Thank you very much.